Sometimes it's as important to be frugal and work smart in the kitchen as it is to work hard. So what we're going to do is create two recipes out of one. I'm going to make a ragu or a stew or a braise or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to serve that as one dish with some pasta. Then I'm going to allow it to cool and I'll put all of that into a pie tin and make some little beef and mushroom pies. First thing I want to do is dust my beef because I want the flour to help thicken the sauce because I'm using this for two reasons. So I want it to be a nice, thick, rich gravy. When it goes into the pies, it'll be nice. It won't run and make a soggy pastry. So you've got to think of, remember you're making two recipes here, so you've got to think of both recipes while you're going through this process. And as I said, it's a great frugal way to get the most out of the ingredients. This is a really super cheap meal. It's not going to cost you a lot. Everything here is nice and cheap. Using a secondary cut of beef, I'm using gravy beef. I think it's the best for making braises and things like pies and ragus. Has lots and lots and lots of flavor, but takes a long cooking time. So flour, about a tablespoon of flour goes in there. A nice big pinch of salt. We want to season our meat. Some cracked pepper. And I'm gonna put a lot of pepper into the gravy itself because I want it to be sort of a pepper steak and mushroom pie at the end. You can just make pies if you want to. I'm just showing you how versatile a braise like this, a, a good beef braise can be. It's all mixed in. Nice coating of flour on everything. I've also got to cook that flour out so it doesn't have that floury taste. So garlic oil into our pan. You want to hear this sizzle as soon as it goes in. I can see the smoke coming off it so it's nice and hot. And I might do this in batches, so we'll do half so we don't overcrowd the pan, and then we'll do the other half. My beef has come out and that's about as good as it's ever gonna look. Lots and lots and lots of crusty coloured bits on the outside, which means there's lots of flavour in that beef. So, Again, when you're cooking things and braising things, you've got a limited amount of ingredients. It's about extracting as much flavor from each ingredient as you can. So in, onion sliced, goes into our pan, same pan. One carrot, which I've roughly chopped, goes in. And then I've got a couple of big Swiss brown mushrooms. I'm gonna do the same, cook that down about the same amount of time that I cooked the meat for, so about 10 minutes. Cook that down, reduce it. You're gonna drive off all the moisture which increases the flavor, so it concentrates the flavor. And again, soften our vegetables, get a little bit of color on the outside. The mass or the amount of food that we had in that fry pan has gone right down. So what you're doing is, as I said, driving out moisture, and as you do that, you're increasing concentration of flavor. So that's now got heaps of flavor in it. We know that our beef has got heaps of flavor in it. We're gonna deglaze with some red wine, about a cup of red wine, bring all the yummy bits off the bottom of the pan, Going to cook that off, cook the alcohol out of the wine for a bit. So we've got about a tablespoon of mixed peppercorns there. Pop them into a pestle and mortar. I don't want to turn them into a really fine pulp. I just want to break them and open up the flavour that's inside. And then that can go straight in to our pot to give us that nice peppery flavour for our pepper steak. Got to mix. That wine is pretty close now. Our beef can go back in with all the juices. A tin of crushed tomatoes can go in. And if you're going to buy the crushed tomatoes for something like this, this one's got mixed herbs in it, it's got a paste in it as well, so I'm getting more flavour with no extra work on my part. So go for something that's got value added to the can to get more flavour. We've got about an hour with the lid on under pressure. If you don't have a pressure cooker and you're gonna cook it on the stove top, then about three hours, but make sure you keep topping it up with a bit of stock or a bit of water because it's gonna reduce down. Or you can pop it into a casserole dish, put it in the oven, put the lid on it, same about three hours. There we go, lid on, locked, and I've got an hour to go and clean up and then I'll relax. I've taken the lid off our pressure cooker and I'm just reducing the sauce down. You can see that it's quite rich and it's reduced reasonably well already because we hadn't, we didn't add any stock or anything like that when we started reducing it. So it's pretty much, I could probably turn the heat off on that now and it would be where I want it to be. So the heat can come off that. 
I'm gonna make my pasta. I'm using the three cheese tortellini from Barilla. I think that combination of cheese with a really rich pasta is a great combination. Put some salt into our water. And salt is probably, always talk about making sure you season your water when you're cooking pasta. But with something like the tortellini, it's more important because inside of the pasta you have a filling. You want that filling to be seasoned. So make sure that your water's seasoned because it will seep into the filling and make sure this filling is seasoned. Pop in our tortellini. These take, according to the packet, 11 minutes to cook, so I'll give them 10. I always like to give it one minute less than the packet tells you. So we've got 10 minutes on that. We'll just allow that to sort of settle and cool, and then we'll plate up our dish. Now I've got a heap of stew or ragu, so I'll use half of it with our pasta for dinner or for lunch, and then we'll get it back out later, and I'll show you how to make the pies.